Hello everyone and welcome back to the Library of the Weird. I hope you're doing fine wherever you are. I am, although I'm quite hot, I'm super sweaty. I hope my face is not, not too red. We have above 30 degrees Celsius today, but it feels like a lot, lot warmer. We have like the moisture is really, really high, but Speaking about hot things, I'm super excited for the book I'm going to talk to, uh, to you about today because one, it's about evil Nazi magicians and two, it's from one of my favorite authors and the one that really got me back into horror. This is Silver Nitrate by Silva Moreno Garcia. So first of all, I really want to apologize to anyone who can speak Spanish because I am probably going to butcher a lot of names, a lot of words. I had like, I believe, I think three years of Spanish in school, but I don't really remember anything and my pronunciation was always super, super bad. So sorry in advance. This book was released in July 2023. So it's actually super hot. It's super new. It was released by Del Rey in the US and by Joe Fletcher books here in Europe. So I have obviously one of these Joe Fletcher uh, editions. And at least in this edition, the book is a bit over 300 pages long. I think the main story is 310 to 320 pages long and it was written by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. If you don't know her, she's a Mexican-Canadian author. She was born and raised in Mexico, and she won a ton of awards. She's most famous for her book, uh, Mexican Gothic, which also won a ton of awards, and as the name suggests, is a Mexican Gothic tale. And this is actually the book that got me back into into horror because I read years and years. I basically only read fantasy and sci-fi, a bit of historical fiction. But after I read Mexican Gothic, I really wanted to go back into horror. She has also done a lot of other things. She's a columnist at the New York Times, I believe, and she's a pu publisher of the Innsmouth Free Press, which uh, releases works of weird fiction. She's written short stories and a lot of a lot of other things. This novel is set in a city in 1993, Mexico. I don't think it's ever mentioned uh, what city it's set in. I could be wrong, but I don't really remember any name of a city. And it features two main characters. And this is probably where my lack of pronunciation skills comes to the surface. So the female lead is called Montserrat. I hope the pronunciation is kind of all right. Um, she's a woman in her late thirties and she works as a sound editor at a, I think it's a small film studio and She's like really fed up with her job because she she's the only woman working in the in sound editing and she doesn't really get along with her other colleagues. She basically only wears black t-shirts with like horror quotes or images on them. She loves horror movies. She listens to metal, to, to rock music, to punk. And yeah, I really do like her as a main character. Our other main character is Tristan. He is, and um, he's about the same age as Montserrat. They've been friends since childhood. He is an actor and to, uh, had roles in like Mexican soap, or, uh, soap operas when he was younger. But these glory days are kind of behind him and he's now mostly working as a voice actor and he really wants to go back into acting 
uh, in movies or soap operas and stuff like that. So the novel starts when Tristan has a bad breakup. He had like one big girlfriend back in the past and now uh, is kind of always running from one relationship and the other. And at the beginning of the novel, uh, his uh, he and his girlfriend have separated and he has to move to a new apartment. And one of his neighbors is called Abel Urueta, who, as it turns out, is a famous director. He's now an elderly man, but he, when he was younger, he worked on very, very cult famous movies. Um, one of which is called Beyond the Yellow Door. And this is one movie Montserrat is really obsessed with. It's a missing movie, so no one has ever seen it. But there are a lot of rumors about it um, because it's also called a kind of a, a cursed movie, like The Exorcist, for example, because a lot of people died after uh, filming had ended and there were accidents on set and stuff like that. And Tristan and Montserrat visit Abel and talk about the movie. And Abel then talks about the weird history of the movie and especially about one certain person who is a German occultist who fled Germany to Mexico. He's called Wilhelm Friedrich Evers. He's not a real person, so not a real historic person. And he wanted to use, he wanted to use the movie, uh, Beyond the Red Door as like a conduit for his magic because he also believes that movies are kind of an amplifier for magic if done right. So there were three scenes in this movie which were really particular. The movie had to be um, he had to be filmed with a film that uses silver nitrate, which is really dangerous and was actually historically used um, for filming movies. And in actual history, a lot of cinemas and film studios burned down because silver nitrate is really flammable, I believe. Abel asks Montserrat and Tristan to dub these three scenes for him because he still has the movie roles, everything else was destroyed, and he just wants to finish the spell that Wilhelm wanted to cast. It's supposed to be a, a spell that when the spell is finished, um, he gives the spellcasters certain, certain powers or mostly luck. So uh, they hope that their lives turn out better when they have finished the spell. And they do this for him, actually, but soon really, really weird things start happening. For example, Tristan um, sees his dead girlfriend in his apartment and, yeah, stuff uh, turns out to be really, really crazy. And this is where I stop talking about the story. If you want to know more, you really have to read the book. It's really, really good. So this novel has many things I really like reading about. I like the story. I like the relationship between the characters. I learned a lot about Mexican culture, Mexican pop culture and Mexican horror movies and stuff like that. I, I always um, wrote like little notes to look things up after I've, uh, after I'm through my reading session because a lot of things uh, in this book I didn't actually know and there are many many historic re uh, references in this book. Then there was a pretty good amount of social commentary, not like too much, it's not a political book, but um, as you may have guessed, um, Wilhelm Evers, the German occultist, is obviously a Nazi and at one point they asked the question at um, how could it be that a white person from Europe who's obviously a Nazi succeeds in talking to the most famous people in the Mexican film industry. And 
I don't know who, I believe Montserrat says something like that, or maybe Abel um, says uh, something along the lines that Mexicans are really proud of their European ancestry and the lighter your skin is, the easier you have it in society. And I didn't really know that. Um, I mean, one could have guessed that, but I think that's that's crazy. Um, I don't know um, what it is like today, but back in the day, it seems like it was really important to have light skin. Yeah, which is really, really stupid. And another thing I found really, really interesting is that they delved a lot into like a German occultism. You can read a lot of books about that because the stories are really kind of crazy. At one point, Hitler wanted to like uh, put all occultists into into concentration camps, but at the same time, um, he had like his his right hand Heinrich Himmler, who was the leader of the SS and who was really really into occultism. Um, recruit a lot of occult, uh, occultists to help the war effort and we have to thank to thank Heinrich Himmler that um, Nazi Germany and especially the SS is associated with like esoteric signs and Nordic runes and stuff like that and this is why uh, Nazis today have a lot of strange tattoos and insignia and of course it's also true that a lot of nazis found safe havens when they fled to central and south america um, at the end of world war ii you can read a lot about this there are, there are some some really really crazy stories especially of some people who got really, really rich in Mexico and other countries um, because the, the Mexican government and uh, the, the government of other Central and South American countries wanted intel on, on, on the Nazis and on, on other, other stuff. And yeah, they were still really, really well connected. And this is, this is crazy that there's probably so much of Nazi gold still in South America. Yeah, which which is just crazy. So one thing I want to talk about is the relationship between Montserrat and Tristan, which I find really interesting. Um, if you... So I don't know how true that is, but I see this in, in a lot of YouTube videos that when you're reading romance or you're reading YA novels, there's one popular trope, um, which is called like the grumpy cat and sunshine trope, um, where a lot of the time the male protagonist is like a very grumpy guy and the love interest or the female protagonist is always happy and very extroverted and like, yeah, it is sunshine. And with uh, Montserrat and Tristan, this is turned around. And I don't think, or at least I, like I said, I see this in YouTube videos. Um, this is not so very common, but I enjoyed this dynamic. Uh, Montserrat is this really, really tough woman who has uh, a sometimes very realistic, but often she kind of tends into uh, tends to slip into like a very negative view of certain situations. And Tristan has a very, very positive attitude. Although, as we find out, um, he has like a very, very tragic backstory. And maybe because of that, he has like this positive outward attitude. What I also really liked about this book is uh, the blend of different genres. If you've read anything uh, other by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, it's something that she really likes to do. 
Um, of course, this is a horror novel, but it also makes use of very comedic, uh, comedic moments. Sometimes it reads like a thriller. We have a lot of history and what Silvia Moreno Garcia is kind of famous for is her use of magical realism. In this book, we kind of delve a bit more into the fantastical than in other novels I've read. But I don't think it's too much. It's it still fe it still feels like a very realistic novel, which uh, that has like its moments when it comes to magic or uh, like weird things following the protagonists and stuff like that. So overall, I really really enjoyed this book. Um, this is for me this is five out of five stars i hope you will read this novel too because it is really really awesome i can't stretch that enough i hope you comment if you've read it and tell me about it and with that i'm finished with my review I know I said in the last video that this one would be my uh, summer wrap up, but I thought we're still in the midst of August. I still probably will read two or three books this month. So I will postpone my summer wrap up to next week or maybe the week after. And of course, I hope that you will be back to watch this summer wrap up of mine. Until then, I hope you have a really nice week. Goodbye.